What's up, YouTube? Andy from the Sports Card Flip Game here with the latest on how to get you plugged into all things sports cards. In today's video, we are going to be doing something that's been very near and dear to my heart, something I've been thinking a lot about, something I've been pondering and working on for quite a little while, and it's ways on how to help you up your game within sports cards. If you haven't already yet, go ahead and click that sub button. We'd love to have you join the team. Before we get into it, be sure to turn on the bell notification as well and hit that like button, smash that if you do enjoy the content. I'm posting twice a week to help you keep you informed on all the latest. And today's is going to be a banger for sure. So without further ado, let's get into it. I've been contemplating really ways for you all to consider how to up your sports cards game. And I think about it from a couple of different perspectives. And really, it, it, it's not just on an all or none, right? It's not flipping or investing or collecting or investing. It's really on a continuum. And I think of those things as interchangeable in that you can collect while investing, while also flipping. And a lot of that comes down to looking at it from really a strategy perspective and kind of a monetary perspective. So really looking at the investing side of things from a very financial standpoint. And as we begin to go a little bit deeper and help you give you some tools on how to up your game, I think want you to kind of think of it from those perspectives, right? That sports cards are on a continuum and you don't necessarily have to fall into simply one category, flipping, collecting, investing. Those can change over time. You can mix and match those. And if you think about it from a strategy and a financial perspective on those two sort of depths, I think it will help make the discussion that much more rich today. So without further ado, here are some tips or some strategies that I've really been thinking about that I think will help you take your game to the next level. The first one is you need to refine your chase. And what I mean by that is very simple, right? As you start off in card collecting, you want to get your hands on particular players or rookie cards or cards from different sets, whether it be Prism or Bowman, things like that. And ultimately in time, what that leads to is just an amalgamation of cards, right? I've got stuff falling out of, of boxes and I've got boxes upon boxes of $50 cards, $100 cards, right? You name it, that fit into kind of my worldview or my uh, level of sports card collecting and investing and flipping. And I've decided that I want to refine that down just a little bit. So let me give you a good example, right? Here's an Adrian Beltre. Uh, this is a Topps Tribute autograph that I pulled. This is numbered to 110. This is a beautiful card, right? But ultimately, as I've evolved in sports cards, I've said, you know what? This is a good card, but this, uh, this Adrian Beltre autograph card, this is from 2017. This is uh, uh, not definitive. This is transcendent. This is number 10. This is an even better card. And so ultimately, I kind of want to put these two up against each other and choose which one I would rather have in my collection. Well, inherently, the transcendent auto is going to win out. For one, it comes from a more rarer, higher end, more sought after set. The serial number is much lower in Transcendent. And, you know, like for like, I just think this is a better looking card. I'd rather have this in my collection. This brings me a little more joy and pleasure on what I want to keep. And so I have to make hard decisions on what I do with this. Do I sell it? Do I keep it in my collection and just kind of hold on to it? And ultimately, those refinements are important for you to take your game to the next level. You can do that same thing with how you choose your money in busting packs, 
in getting into breaks, things like that. In baseball, right, there's been Top Series 1, there's been Inception, there's been Gypsy Queen, there's been, you know, all the select products and things like that. You might have actually invested a lot in those products. And now here coming out soon are Top Tier 1 and Diamond Icons. You might actually have said, you know what? I've over invested into some of those products and I don't, I would rather have some of those higher end cards and you kind of shot your load, so to speak. So I think you need to really refine your chase. And for me, I'm looking at leveling up and only buying higher end cards. And by that, I don't mean, hey, I'm going to never, ever, ever open a pack of Bowman from retail. It's I'm not going to look at these from an investment perspective. This is purely going to be entertainment. And I'm not going to really put any of those into my PC. I'm going to, right, just kind of do that for fun and enjoyment and then take my game up when it comes to my ultimate collection. So really then, the second tip that I've got for you is you have to wisely divest your position in particular cards. And really what I mean by that is you need to look at things really on a monetary scale. And you could say, you know what, I could have three $50 cards or I could have one $150 card. And like for like, that nets out to be the same investment. And ultimately, right, I have to lose my attachment to certain cards. Where that comes into play is ultimately around flipping, right? And guys who are flippers, and I'm not the best by any means, but I need to take a more disciplined approach to actually selling. And so one of the things that I'm doing is saying, you know what, I'm gonna list five cards per day. I'm gonna really ensure that I'm getting out of, right, all these lower end cards, all these things that have just been kind of sitting here that I sort of think and look, oh, that's low hanging fruit. I'm gonna wait for it to get to where it's a 5X or a 10X return. And I have to say, you know what, I'm gonna be okay with a 2x return or a 4x return. And I want to give you an example of that. So here's a Luca Prism base rookie card. I bought this when it was $20. Roughly a value right about now is kind of in the $150, $160 range. So I could look at that as $140-ish profit, about an 8x return. Totally great investment, love this, right? But as I'm starting to think about moving position into different cards, you could also do this. And these are four Luka Donruss rookie cards. I got these for $5 a piece. I got them way back when. Again, if I were to sell them today and move my position, roughly around $45, $50 a piece for these. And that nets out, you know, this one card or these four cards I need to take some money off the table and put it into, what I'm wanting to do is to put it into a little higher end card. These four can actually net out a higher yield than this one, right, base Luca rookie card. And so these, in theory, if I could sell them for $50, are about a 10x return. And the net profit would be a little bit larger, up to $180 or so on these four as opposed to just this one. So ultimately flipping more and flipping more volume is really where it's at when you're trying to move your position, divest a little bit from lower end cards. And then ultimately what I'm wanting to do is reinvest them into higher end cards. And what that comes down to is being disciplined, right? It's about having disciplined strategy. It's about actually making moves from a financial or monetary position and understanding the timing that goes into that. When you're flipping, a lot of times what you're doing is you're looking at the trends, right? You're trying to predict who's going to be hot in the market and buying ahead of that upward curve. When you're collecting or when you're investing, you're not necessarily saying, you know what, that trend matters to me. You're riding the wave a little bit more and you're saying, I've got a longer term perspective on these investments. 
So on the flip side, the other aspect of taking your sports car game to the next level is really looking at your monetary or your investment perspective and really taking a hard look at that. I think of sports cards very much from an investment or a financial, you know, kind of traditional stock perspective and looking at it from both a diversi diversification standpoint, if I can get that word out right, uh, but also really looking at refining that strategy and really refining my portfolio. So I talked a little bit about how I want to move into higher end cards. I think once you get that, that's great. But how do I do that on my same budget, right? And I think that that's a really hard thing that you have to look at and understand, okay, how do I move from lower to mid-end cards or mid to high-end cards within my same, you know, kind of capital outlay? I think how you do that is looking at your overall sort of 80-20 rule around investing 80% into blue chip or proven guys, 20% into prospects, uh, and kind of that gambling or fun aspect, and maybe refining that over time. I think what that ultimately does is it kind of moves you, your risk tolerance, so to speak, into something that's a little bit more safe. And what I mean by that is I've been doing a lot of investing in Dirk Nowitzki. He's one of my favorite players, so here's the top's finest rookie card. Uh, this is a PSA 10. Uh, this is a great, great card. But what I've also been doing, and this is kind of how you can blur that line, is I've also been buying some raw finest rookie cards. My thought is, if he's great at PSA 10, then I'm going to make my money back and then some on these. Where you have to be disciplined and think through this from a financial standpoint is kind of setting an expected return on these investments. And these were $20 a piece. And I forget what I paid for this. Um, but my thought would be, hey, if I can get two or three or four X return on this, even if I love this card, I need to get rid of it and up my game to get, you know, uh, an Ionix card that's a PSA 10 or a serial number rookie card from Upper Deck, right? Those are things that I've been looking after. Or higher end Dirk Autos. That's certainly something that I've been keeping in mind too. So you can actually still blur those lines but really looking at refining your portfolio from an investment perspective and setting targeted returns so that you're ultimately taking money off the table and pulling that back is really important. Because otherwise, if you keep all your chips on the table and you just keep buying and buying and buying, you're gonna end up with a ton of cards that may go to zero, they may hold their value, you just never know, but you're not ever really uh, realizing any returns. And so ultimately, being a disciplined investor, which is my next and final strategy, ultimately I think comes to fruition in a couple different ways. First, you have to ignore easy flips, right? It's so easy to look at a card and say, man, I can make 10 bucks on that. Man, I can double my investment and make 20 bucks. But that longer term hold sometimes yields the five, 10, 20 X that you're looking for. And sometimes that's more important, whereas that flip game, that three or four quick return is very important too, but you have to look at it on a much shorter time frame. I think you have to sell more, right? So I have to look at it and go, you know what? I need to take some of my position away and move them into higher end cards. Again, as I'm talking about Dirk Auto cards, right? I've got a couple here that are really, really important to me. I need to look at this and go, okay, how can I turn these into a flawless or an immaculate card that's gonna be my PC forever, right? And if I can do that, and I, if I can flip those in there, I really will have made the right moves. And that's what I'm trying to do. Ultimately, the final kind of point I wanna to make to you is that flipping and investing, right? Kind of understanding where you're at on the continuum comes down to a couple things. First, you've got to be able to understand the trends and be able to help use those to your advantage. And then two, you have to understand sometimes either how to buck those trends and ride the wave and not pay attention to a short-term gain and play the long game. Or finally, you need to actually understand how to time the market. 
And what I mean by that is you have to be able to understand how to predict and how to actually invest wisely so that over time you can make the most and really get out of this hobby what you want to. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully some of this made sense to you as we're trying to give you some more real tangible advice on how to make things work for you. If you did like the content, leave me a comment down below. Tell me how you're actually taking things to the next level. Is it just buying more? Okay, great, I get it. Sometimes it's actually just putting more and more money into the hobby, but we've gotta keep in mind that prices continually go up for sealed wax and the overall you know product is becoming harder and harder to get your hands on so when that comes into mind how are you going to make your mark in sports cards so until next time keep your flip game strong